the lightens by the Need some light, don't I? That's better. Let's use in then just another subscriber, DJJD Noel J23. Well, envy it, will you be ready? Good stuff. Indy, Indica Head Shop, Big Foster, Man from Nightmares, James Mincher, Sophie Sparks, Botar, Joe27, Chris425, Steve Rambo. Good on you, just a subscriber. Pot Noodle Dad, Big Toker, Darren Roberts. Choose a life, not a nice kick, then. Got us. Hope you're good, lad. The Mucha, Chat and Poo. Absimus Maximus. Hope you're well, lad. Nice to hear off you again. Edgy. So, what are we speaking about? Keeping it positive. El Raxiano, Wagwan, Spartacus, Jamie, Jamie, yes, pal. Good to see you, Kalanach. Always be there. Hit the like button. Start pressing the likes. Got 70 people and only five likes. Send sexes there. Jim Carroll, Dave, Angie, the member. Williams in as well, the good member and moderator. This camera angle's a bit different, isn't it? Gives me a mad complexion, doesn't it? Well, it is what it is. Just more convenient at the moment. Lady G Baby's in. James Masoon. Easy people. Them lights are bright now, though, aren't they? <laughs> James Massoon, Ben Andrews, Justice for Olivia, always mate, Richie Bad from Wales. How are you, fellow M. Sanders? Just chilling, mate. A few hours on live on YouTube. Talk about the current situation with regards to the Kinnahan Cartel. And also, crime, black on black gun crime, and white on white gun crime. Brendan Mansell, I've liked it, bro. Good stuff. Sentex, Anthony Chillum, PK20. Stop talking, poo. PK2020, LD5, need block on that. Angie, King Jones, G followed you from day dot lad. What a legend you are, lad. Nice one, Stephen Daniels. How are you doing tonight? That's fine, Ryan. David McIntyre's in. The police have offered fifty grand to Olivia. 
killer. And all the other mates, it was Lord Ashcroft. Lord Ashcroft has volunteered £50,000 of his own money as a reward in the pursuit of the killer of that young girl. Joe 27, I ran past that boat on the canal today. That kid was screaming at his bed. <laughs> what we chatting about tonight says choose a life, not a knife. Chose a life. You tell me, brother, what do you want to talk about? Come on, enlighten us, lad. Daz, when training and that, do you eat fast? I eat when I'm hungry, basically. When I train, it makes me hungry. That hunter gatherer's mindset, you know. Yes, Angie. Butter. That kid in his bed, some weird rats. They just must have woke up on the wrong side of the bed. It is what it is. So I thought it was like, I don't know, I don't even know what time it was. I know what you're saying, Chris. Four, two, five. Yes, Darren. But the ones with the information, 50 grand of appeal at them. You know, these, these people who's got the information that's needed, 10 grand they'd go out and shoot someone for. So 50 grand appeals to them type of people. Maybe well. Would you see the K Banker got nabbed last few days? You think it will have an impact or the next person into Dylan White? A sixty two year old fella that was arrested in Spain. High ranking at the Kinahan Cartel. Money launderer, international money launderer, global. Hello Flamingo. Marcus Collins, Garros. How does guns and drugs get over to the UK? Well, people like the Kinnan Cartel get them imported into the UK, get them distributed round Ireland, round Manchester, round Liverpool, everywhere, right across the UK. But it's all crumbling down for them now. You know, they're all starting to snitch. That's why you're seeing a lot of um, people being arrested with large amounts of drugs in Europe, around Marbella and Spain and Alicante and places like this. So this big fella, this 62-year-old money launderer, high-ranking member of the Kinnan Cartel, is just showing you. It's only a matter of time before they're all roped in and placed into American custody. And once they're in American custody, unless they cooperate, they're not getting out of American custody anytime soon. So, I've been saying for like the last eight weeks, in my mind, in my opinion, Daniel Kinnahan has turned snitch. It's as simple as that. And when you start looking at what's gone on since the arrest warrants have been put out there. People that he's had sat around Europe for years are all of a sudden getting nick left, right and centre. We know, we know the influence they've had in Liverpool. We know the little gunmen that have run around the city for the Irish cartel. We know the damage they've created. We know the boxing gyms that they funded through shit TK Global. You see all the fighters. You see the podcasters that affiliated themselves to them started spinning a false narrative to make Daniel Kinahan look like he was a good guy when really he was polluting our communities and destroying families, getting granddads, dads and kids shot dead. Continues to do so, just like he continues to have a, a huge influence in the boxing world. So this fella that's just been nicked in Marbella, 62-year-old, been at it for years, money laundering for years with the Kinnan Cartel, pure cash man. They believe he was, they believe he was laundering £200 million a year. And that's big dough. I think it was a year. 
that's big money. And he had interest in Glasgow. And you see in the other month, that woman I've been screaming about since they tried to kill me. That woman, that's Sandra, who had fake beak 10 years ago. You know, they went through her door, took all her stuff. She's right in the middle of it. Now you've got him attached to a, a, um, a alcohol producing company. And that was one of their ways of laundering their money. And what you're seeing with their big stars, the likes of McGregor, that their type of notoriety, when they were in their best place making money, putting the money into all legit businesses. Unfortunately for everyone who's a supporter of McGregor, he went into business, went into the alcohol business, designed his own drink, put it out there. But a lot of that money was from the back roots of NTK Global. You know, that's where it is. That's how it happens. And when you've got... You must have seen it yourselves. That's it, Nero drinks. You must have seen it yourselves. If you haven't, you're a little bit blind, aren't you, as to what's going on? Yes, Crumster. But you've got to look at the bigger picture. You know, you've got to look look how entwined they became because they were in existence in Liverpool in 2004. They wasn't existent. They fled. They had to flee. You know, you had a general over the road saying, hang on a minute. It doesn't matter if you keep on doing this to my family. So they fled. Before they fled, they destroyed boxing in Ireland for years. Landed over this side of the waters. And just easy. Started wigging top-notch gangsters in most cities. Everyone bowed down because of the fear factor and the Irish accent. And that was it, mate. They just took over. Anyone that didn't play ball was fucking out of the country. They had the wealth, they had the money, they had the superstars around them. It was a powerful organisation. All that money all of a sudden started getting shifted into boxing gyms and, you know, MMA gyms. You've heard me speaking about them for years. You know, your Daddy Matthews, your fucking Team Colbans. They came at me, the bottom line was. You know, I've landed back in Liverpool, completed my licence, thought I'm going back to my Mars, landed there. You've had some little knobhead graft on for them. You know, this knobhead's feeling frightened because I'm back in town. There's been a rumour spread that I'm looking to take the graft back when I wasn't. And there you go. You got a little bit shook. I've had to defend myself. All of a sudden, my nephews are getting attacked. Me being me, I've had to defend it. And it just went to the point where the Kinnington Cartel's little runaround in Liverpool, he was distributing most of the swag. Who had at one point travelled to Birmingham and shot dead someone. That's how he got his little stripes for the cartel. He was now in Liverpool, running around, shifting major weight, but at the same time, terrorising kids and running around a certain area of Anfield, think the Prime Minister. <laughs> Don't know why I said the Prime Minister. Anyway... Little shook pony couldn't handle it. He went and cried. Horses that he was getting flicked here, there, and everywhere. Him and two little nuggets called the Eveses decided to plot and try to come and get me. But in the process, they got swept on, got arrested with the firearms, and got imprisoned. But they still carried on. They, had, they continued to try and kill me. I was getting too vocal. I was getting too annoying. You know, I was I was rattling the cages of many people in the area I once controlled. I was disturbing the graft, A, B and C, whatever. So the 17th of March, 2018, on my master's death, they decided to try and kill me. Someone, family lifelong friend, I thought, walked me into a situation where I should have been shot dead. Luckily for me, being guided by the skies like I was in 2004. 
It never happened. The one that tried to lead me to my death ended up getting shot. He ended up in hospital, and I lived to tell the story. When I started going down the path of looking at what was destroying our communities, it was the drug dealers. When I'm starting to raise concerns about this, the only people that was attacking me was the drug dealers I refused to work with. When they started attacking me the way they was, instead of me returning to me always, going hey oh, running around the streets with guns, retaliating, I used me mouth. I used me mouth through freestyling, rapping. Choose a life, not a knife. Give me the time to think. Told me not to retaliate like I did in 2004. So I'll carry on now, keep on doing me sh I'm in a bad place though, psychologically, due to the pressure of being under. Living smack bang in L5. Rats trying to kill me on the step. All this sort of stuff, fresh out of prison, fresh off licence. Then I'm arrested. I'm arrested with a set of sack of tears. I don't even know why I'm telling you this, it's all there. But I'm arrested with a set of sack of tears, aren't I? And then I'm on bail for two years. So I completed my licence. And then as soon as I completed my within four months, they've arrested me and kept me on licence for two years. After two years, I won the case. Well, it just got thrown out of court. And now I've been free for 18 months. The Kennington Cartel, when I was on the platforms, telling you all what they'd done, decided to recruit people who was already on these social platforms. And then people tried to cancel me out for them because I was shedding the real light on them. I was screaming about what was happening with them. I was telling you how they were destroying the city of Liverpool by killing kids and hiding young Liverpool kids to kill other young Liverpool kids. I started raising negative awareness against them. So their friends that was already on platforms who tried to muscle into my little energy field and got refused started attacking me. And that's where One-Eyed Monster comes into the situation. You know, let's not forget what's just gone on in the last two and a half years towards me from them. There was intention there, and the reasons was because of their connection to the Kinnaton cartel. So when you look at the when you look at the one-eyed monster's best friend in Glasgow, the other podcaster, them two came at me thick and thin. I recognised it. I could see what they were doing and exposed it before they could bring me down. They still tried to bring me down with the same narrative, labelling me all this under the sun. Then they went a step further and give a platform to a complete liar called Snitchy Bumbercart. Now, Snitchy Bumbercart came out and said I'd groomed him into selling drugs. He'd I'd battered them, I'd made them do this, I'd made them run this, bam, 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 bam. Absolutely wrote me off. The headline on One Eyed Monsters platform, social media, YouTube, with 50,000 subscribers, was Darren G groomed me. At a stage when it's full of monsters everywhere and that word is massive, that's what they tried to do. Wreck me with that shout on behalf of the Kinnan Cartel. I stood my ground, exposed them, and told it how it is. Snitchy Bummerclark was 12 when I went into prison. He was a complete liar. He'd never been around me. One eyed monster knew that, given the platform to tell complete lies about me. The wave of hate had come at me on the back of that. Why? Because I was telling the truth about the Kinnan Cartel. And then you see the little Hermie from Glasgow, the little madman. You see what he does. All of a sudden, he's getting a long line of MTK Global Fighters sitting on his podcast. A long line of fighters that he's all aware of attached to that corrupt system of boxing. All sitting on his platform, all speaking up friendly about this. Daniel Kinnahan, all logging them with pictures in Dubai. Within them, them good people that get the pitches in Dubai, are they the people that set businesses up with them? Your Tyson Furies, your McGregor, your Darren Tills. And if you look at the last three years, they went into business and they set up big multi million pound businesses with the help of the Kinnahan Cartel. And they're doing it in front of your faces, laundering pure dough in front of your faces. And I'll give you an example of one massive 
in your face money laundering operation. And it came on behalf of MTK Global Sisters promotion problem. Some of you might have heard of it. It might have come from fucking nowhere. All of a sudden, in the city of Liverpool, this promotion bounced up from where called Problem. Everyone latched onto it. Why? Because all the ones linked to MT Global were promoting it, talking about it right across the board, getting it the attention it needed. And it was going to have a big event in Liverpool, which it did. On the main card of that big event in Liverpool was a known convicted MMA fighter called Paul Kelly. This MMA fighter destroyed his community of West Derby United by intimidation, fear and distributing drugs, just like his uncles and his dad used to. He gets arrested, he cries in the dock, he goes to jail for eight years, but he's out in three. Right? He's back out now, he's in the community, his girlfriend is the daughter of a very high-ranking mafia official from Liverpool, who's now being arrested. And I was screaming about him years ago, I just can't remember his name. But he comes out with him having a little bit of a following because he's part of Team Colburn now. He's back in the links, you know, he's back out, he's out of jail, he's back in the MMA arena's band, he's with Darren Till, he's Team Colburn, MTK, problem. They use him as a way of selling tickets. Now, the way this thing happens, and this is how it works, people, these people, the majority of them with the dough, live in Dubai. And in Dubai, you've got access to all sorts of technology where you can buy 100,000 tickets to that event or to watch that pay-per-view event. Do you understand? And that's what it does. You'll have, you'll have the likes of Paul Kelly laundering his own money to the event, selling his own tickets, saying he sold 5,000 tickets when really he sold 2,000, covering the that. And that's how it works. That's what goes on. That was a money laundering operation right in front of your eyes. When that promotion problem, the sister club to MTK Global came to Liverpool. And that's me not defamination. Although they deny the links. It is what it is. Anyway. Hope you never got lost with that there. So just brief history. Someone mentioned the 62-year-old. What was his name? Johnny. I don't know. But that's how it is. Now, there's still existence. Where do you stand with all them podcasters now, Darren? I don't stand nowhere near them, mate. I can't stand any of them. Like I said yesterday la, or the day before, every podcast I've been on, the hosts switched on me. When they all, you know, when it was time to shut me down with the help of them two. Let's not forget what they've done, people, because it was nasty. I've survived it. I've got through it. They haven't. You know, they've suffered 10 times more than me. Why? Because truth prevails. And when I'm screaming this about the Kinnerton cartel, and I'm the li- I'm linking these to this, you've only got to look at look at the picture. You know, it was what it was. I can't believe no podcasters, let alone Liverpool ones, apart from you. I haven't mentioned Paul Olivia, Mark Chapman. It's mad, mate. It's mad. You know, the funeral was today. The funeral was this morning. There was a lot of people there from the community in the city. You could see the warmth. You could see the energy there. But you could also see the pain and the trauma that's going to follow. And that pain and trauma will always be with the mum. But you can ease the pain and you can ease that trauma with justice. For that mum to know she can sleep at night knowing someone is being held responsible for doing that to her daughter. That's what's important here when you start speaking about that. 
I don't really want to speak about it too much because it'll dilute the content that I'm trying to put together for the 20 seconds. But you've got to understand, mate. How it's still going. I think with the Reese, with the Reese, um, with the Reese Jones murder, it was the public that exposed the killer first, basically, throwing him around social media, had him all over the place, exposing him and his name getting thrown left, right, and centre. Now that's not happening, and there's a reason for it. There's a reason for it, mate. There's been quite a few shootings up that Dove Cot, Heighton, up them areas, West Derby, Canny Farm. Steve the Red has mentioned the Encro chat. The Encro chat hasn't stopped, mate. You know, it comes in stages, doesn't it? They'll go out, they'll get the people that are blatantly, blatantly guilty. You've only got to go and arrest them and put them in the court and that's it, they're guilty. They've gone out, they've done all that. But in areas areas of concern, let's say, what avenues the money going? When they're doing all this drug dealing and all this, the money's coming in and the money's going to certain places. And that's what they're following these days, the money. They want a cashless society. And they've been targeting cash for about two or three years now. Mash up beats, I did, mate. I did, lad, yeah. I heard about it. What a sad story it was, bro. Very, very sad. Why don't you get into the podcast world, Darren Kidderlang? Because when I get into it, the podcasters that are non relevant try to shut me down. No, just a little hateful ones. I'm not a podcaster, mate, am I? Let's have it right. If someone called me in and said, we want you to interview whoever, I'd do it like that, but I'm not a podcaster. Although I say he's podcaster, what are podcasts? Podcasts are not just interviews. This is a podcast. I'm in a little pod and I'm casting to you. It's the same thing, just because I'm not interviewing. Doesn't mean it's not a podcast, you understand? Some people don't need to interview. Some people don't need to drag other people's lives into the situation to have that continuity of content. Half of them can't sit here. They've got a feed off board like this. and Why don't you start doing documentaries, visiting locations, families? I had all that planned, and the people I had a plan with don't need to go there anymore. In my opinion, the podcast world is done now. It's older. Well, you can see, I'm doing it the old way, just me. You know, I feel I'm vibrant. I feel I can just do whatever I want and everything will be sweet. But these are the ones. They're starting to have co-hosts like they're a breakfast show. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They're starting to pull people in like the proper, like it's question time when it's not. It's just a kind of platform. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying now? Debbie, I only had cash the other day to queue and cost the drive through wait for 20 minutes and shoes crash. It's going that way. How's your acting career going, mate? I couldn't get to the place. I can't get from here to Leeds 
at quarter to eight at night, stay there till half nine and get the train back. It's impossible. So I've asked them to put it back and give me a, a, a smaller time. So I'm just waiting for the response. Life is an act. Your whole life you're acting with, with the champion. You engage more with the views and tell her how it is. I haven't been engaging for a long time, have I? Been over there on Instagram. It was just a different vibe. I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. Darren, you going on any more podcasts, lad? You know what? I'm scared to, mate. <laughs> I've had some good offers, you know, and refused them because I've just had bad experiences with them, mate. Honest to God. You ask most lads that go on them podcasts with whoever, and the majority of them will tell you, as soon as I started mixing with that crowd, everything went to me life. And you see it with other podcasters. You know, you've seen podcasters, like you're going to use an example. Remember Ben Woods? Ben Hatchett had a picture of himself and Brady next to him. <laughs> but look, example, why is he an example? Because he was a decent kid. He just got out of hospital. He had his own little story that was half tangible. He cracked on. Started getting into the podcasting world. Had a nice little network of southerners from down his end of the country around him. Everything was going sweet. He hid a lot of his backstory. He was on me for a year or so, asking me to get on his thing. And I was avoiding people because of a bit of experience off another podcaster. So I was avoiding people. Eventually, I've said, come on then. Let's do a podcast. Went down, done a podcast with him. It elevated his YouTube channel to monetization stages. It was the most viewed thing on a platform ever. All of a sudden, the people, the other podcasters that I taught, exposed what they were doing. Because I'd went quiet on Woods because I was just going into whatever I was going into with my mental health, because I've gone quiet on him. He switched on me within four weeks, because these had gone into his head. And then he just switched on me, bang, come at me thick and thin. Started doing podcasts, hand down from one-eyed monster that likes a snitchy bumper class. He sucked the life out of me, just like Flamingo saying. Absolutely sucked the energy right out of me. They're all weird, aren't they? And then you seen it, didn't you? You like you had like twelve trolls just appear on YouTube from all over the country, all little weird, messed up individuals just trolling the life out of me. <laughs> Sweet kid, absolutely fantastic. Who was it, Darren? Who was what? Been following you from the start, as choose a life, not a life forever. I'm 50% brummy on my dad's side. Glad you like brum. Birmingham's boss lad. You and Yummy B would be fire. He's only got to reach out to me, mate. He can come come to where I am, sit in mine all day, go for a scram. Abby Brown. It is what it is. That's the levels, that's the levels they're willing to drop to to sabotage someone else's progression and someone else's, you know, elevation in life. That's all they've done. Kept me busy with bullshit for like two and a half years. Mark Chapman. Yes, Lady G. Dodgy thoughts. I've seen him around maple syrup. <laughs> Lady G, baby. Abby Brown's mentioning every name. Block them then, Lady G, if it's happening. Have you been to South Wales Valleys? Sure have. Park Prison. <laughs> Liverpool is full of that, to be honest. Envy. Original classics. It's everywhere now. It's everywhere, mate. 
not just a Liverpool lad. A lot of Liverpoolians share and care. Darren, what do you think about? I don't even know who you're on about, mate. Yes, bro, hope you're good. Angie, Lady G, it's there, Ross. He doesn't need any of the other stuff. So it is what it is, people. You've had the three men over the mother that was shot in her own home. They've been released. Kieran, Data, Data, Daito. I can listen to your talks as you talk well and have good experience. But some of the others are so hard to listen to. Some of the others are messed up. Very, very messed up, mate. I'm not like them. I'm not part of the others. I've always been my own little thing. And that's what upset them, really. You know, I didn't participate in that little circle. You know, where we all share the same interviews. And we just pass them around like the cattle. And you'll see them on there. I can get you an interview on there, you know, mate. As if they're your mate and they're doing you a favour. When really, they're doing a podcast and circle a favour. You see them everywhere, then they disappear. Used and abused. With the promises of help of elevating them. Why don't you start a podcast? The minute you say you're starting a podcast, they switch on you. <laughs> ben Adams, what's up, kid? Hope you're well. Got me on a eye for once. Mario lad, Legend, God bless you, Dad and Lad, and Lady G, and the fam. Nice one, mate. Yes, Pat from Ireland. Anthony, what do you think needs to happen in Liverpool in order to reduce the amount of drug-related crime? Do you think decriminalisation of all drugs would work? All drugs? No. People who take drugs commit crime. So don't think they're only committing crime to take drugs. People who are on drugs commit crime. It's not the case, like everyone likes to make out that. Um, there's loads of crime committed because people are committing crime for the money so they can buy the drugs. Yeah, that's a portion of it. But the majority of violent crime is when people are intoxicated with substances. Do you remember when alcohol used to be illegal? Delegalised it. What's alcohol doing to our society now? How many people have been out in clubs and pubs and just seen violence and walk from nowhere and there's blood and glass and screaming everywhere? How many times have you seen weddings that's meant to be a peaceful ceremony where it brings two families together for the rest of their lives just to erupt because they're drunk? You understand what I'm saying? So there's loads and loads of violence is committed whilst people are intoxicated on class A drugs, class B drugs, class C drugs, especially vacation that they take in friends and drink alcohol, like tramadol, sends them scatty. So, look at the bigger picture. Let's legitimise all drugs. All drugs you can get out of your chemist. Come on, let's all turn into drug addicts. It's not a good way forward. It'd be good to have destinations. You know, you've got a lot of lost land within cities. You've got a lot of rubble that could be turned into areas of drug taking, rough sleeping, you know, health checks. Why not, instead of having them splattered all around the town centres, outside your local shops, why not give them somewhere that resembles security, that resembles, if it comes to the crunch, I can go there and put my head down on a pillar. Obviously, if you set that sort of operation up or system up in a city like Liverpool, you will have homeless people or people just wanting to take advantage, travelling from all over the country to get to Liverpool so they can get access to that facility. So you'd have to just say, hang on a minute, only Liverpool-born homeless people reside in this gaff. 
I know it might be discriminating, but it's times where people are discriminating on left, right and centre, whether you like it or not. You know, you might be a soldier, you get the benefit of the doubt, get in there, kid. It's a warm bed, just like the army was. But if you look now, and if you look at the situation right now, every division has became more severe. Everything that divides us as people in this country has become more obvious. You know, it's it's highlighting itself that there is major problems with division in this country. And it only takes loose cannon to make it blow up. And you can see it. There's a few other things that I'd like to mention since the Queen's passing. And it's the American influence all of a sudden. All of a sudden we're starting to hear these words of, now don't be offended, but it's very rare we've heard these words in this country. And for some reason, the news networks, the, the talk show hosts, so on and so forth, are mentioning these two words and highlighting them. And that's Republican and royalist. Now, we both know what that means over there on the powerful island of Ireland, don't we? We both know what it means in America. It's all you ever hear with their politics, Republicans, loyalists, whatever. Now, they're bringing that influence over here. You're also going to start hearing about the American influence of sports starting to edge its way into the football game over here. Everything that's going on over here is becoming influenced by the American power base, whether we like it or not. You've seen it in the music industry. You've seen them purposely going out, getting some of these artists from London. Um, let me take two as an example. Heady One and that kid, he's at it. I'll just use them as an example. They've gone in, they've coughed for them. All of a sudden, they're dressing like Bloods and Crips. You see them over in America for a bit, you see them in Dubai for a bit, next minute they come back and they're representing the Bloods and the Crips. This is an American fucking swang. This is a, this like the red and the blue. It's always been the case, hasn't it? And now look what's happening. You've got kids who spit drill, who associate with certain groups, drill artists who are notorious around London that borders for violence, and half of these drill artists do participate in their life. And half of, the, half of the boys that are around them don't really participate in their life. But once they're moving with these cliques of drill artists to promote knife crime and drug crime and gun crime, the intelligence is placed upon them. They get placed in a system. And that system, just like the system in Liverpool, the Matrix system, if you're in a car with my man who's linked to gun crime and the intelligence on him is stating that he carries guns whilst in a motor vehicle, you're now put into the same category as that individual. You now possibly may carry firearms in your car just because you've been with this group. Do you understand? So you could be driving to somewhere in London, doing your own little thing, driving the way you normally, go past the plug car, beep, 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 firearms. Could be firearms on board. You might just have a little odds of weed in your pocket. You might just be thinking, he's going to smoke me for whatever reason. Take a little chase. <laughs> just like the young black man Cabba in London. Exactly the same process. 
He's been mixing with a group of artists. He's a drill artist himself. This group has had intelligence placed upon them that they're involved in firearms and they're involved with a dispute with this other group and it's it's getting a bit hot. As soon as he's gone past the police car, dee, 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 right on him. He might have panicked. He might have done whatever he'd done. He's chase mode. These police in this day and age in the city of London cannot take any risks when it comes to a car that's got markers on it. When it comes to a car that's involved in organised crime that could be possessing firearms and whatever else. And that's the way it works. That car's refusing to stop. You know the protocol, people. You know the protocol. If you've got armed response chasing you and telling you to stop and you're refusing and ramming them and that, it's only going to go one way, especially in this day and age. Trust me. Now, I'm not condoning the police officer's actions. I'm not trying to lessen how naughty and how unlawful this murder is. I'm trying to make a point that there's loads of lads out there right now that are mixing with groups that are having intelligence placed upon them that's not normally accurate that's linking them to firearm incidents that's linking them to drug dealing that's linking them to all sorts of mad don't even know it why because you're mixing with that group and what's happened to that cab there can happen to any one of you it doesn't matter about your skin color trust me You know, there's incidents that's been going on for years where you've had men shot dead by police. Years. It's part of the match. It's part of the game. If you're leading a life of crime, you know, it's like cops and robbers. It's what it is. It's how it works. If you're designing, if you're deciding to commit violent crime within your life and you end up shot dead by police at a time when you're not committing violent crime. It's just one of them things where you're like, just one of them days. I'm not in any sense saying anything derogative towards the young man Cabot that was unlawfully killed by the police in London or his family. I'm coming from an angle of observation where there's loads of lads in exactly the same position as Cabba. And if they react the way Cabba did on that day in a car, the way he did, it's a strong possibility the end and result is going to be the same due to the due to the amber warnings that exist in London through terrorism and whatever. It is what it is, a different ball game in this day and age, and you, you all know it is. So if you're committing crime and you're running around shooting guns left, right and centre and then all of a sudden you're taking a chase and whatever happens to you, you can't start saying blue fair that it's part of the game. It's what you sign up for. I all encourage you to back out the game. It's not like it used to be. You're not getting a 10 no more. You're getting a 20. You're not getting CS gas no more. You're getting tasered. You know, we've gone forward. Things are more violent. The police have got to, got to adapt to them violent situations if they don't to get out of control. 10 years ago, every police officer had C gas, CS gas on them. Right now, 50% have got a taser on them. Give it another couple of years, every one of them will have a taser on them. Five years down the line, if it carries on going the way it's going with all the violence and all this around the city, around the world, around the country. Every officer on the streets in this country will have a firearm on them. Then what are you going to do? So it is what it is. It's, it, need, it needs addressing by community activists. As I keep on saying, it needs addressing by community activists. And you've got these groups that are kicking in again like they did in America, spreading their influence of racism, convincing hundreds of youth that 
the majority of this country hate them and the majority of this country against them when we're not using our user us where you you need to start looking past your skin color and what the f them people done hundreds of years ago even 80 years ago 70 years ago 50 years ago it's exactly fuck all to do with all us nothing so when you've got people coming in with the american influence dressing like the militant organizing protests against the government and the police forces upon your streets do you really want it to go that way jeez do you want your streets in london completely Anyway, David McIntyre. Obviously, I'm speaking, so I'm not getting on to the questions. But if there's any good questions, I'll answer them. If there's any crap ones, you're not even getting a mention. Troy Fuller, the Bridewell was messy. Cell 13 and cell 17, I think it was. Whew. Used to drag it in there and give you a good eye. But that's how far the country's come with policing. You know, go back 20 years ago, go back 22 years ago. When you were arrested, you were battered. You were going up in court, bruised up with your wrist snapped. You were getting hurt. Physically and psychologically. Now, you're just getting hurt psychologically. But you get times where people are getting killed in cells. So you can't, you can't really. What can you do about it? What can you do about it? You've got bad employees in every walk of life. In every working environment, you have got bad apples within that employment. Do you understand? Just block the the ones with wheeled names. They're just there for that reason, aren't they? Mentioning Bellens and stuff. Laura J, got to start educating from young in schools. It won't change overnight, but you're right. And if things don't change, God knows in a few years. Darren, do you think there's any possibility of disruption of terrorism at the state funeral on Monday? Crime, we will get there, bad average. Well, let's not. Let's, let's hope there's not another act of terrorism in this country, eh? You know, you're going to have your obvious people that are trying to divide the country. You're going to have the obvious groups and the obvious conspiracy theorists out there that are going to try and divide the country. And they're going to try and devalue the responsibilities of King Charles. And they're going to start questioning his position of power within this country. And they're going to start having you doubting, well, is he going to be the king in the future? Or isn't he going to be the king in the future? And is this is this prediction right? And is that prediction right? And this is all a part of the process of weakening your loyalties to the king. It's how they get into your mind at first. They have you questioning, is he going to be long-term? Is the this, is the this? Trust me, if there's anything important for this country to know about this country and progress and whatever, that king will address the country and tell us what's going on. He won't do it the way anyone else has done it. He will address the country and say, this is what's going on, this is how we're moving forward, and this is what's happening next. You don't need to listen to conspiracy theorists. You don't need to listen to all this that hate the monarchy or hate the values of our country or how good we get it or how good we've had it or how powerful we've been right round the globe for decades upon decades upon decades. You've got to understand where we come from. 
Although we're Irish stock and our heritage is Irish blood, most of our Irish blood came to this country years and years and years ago. Settled here when they were 13, died when they were 96ers. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not just English in this country anymore. It's multicultural right through the veins, right through the blood, right through the DNA. We're a powerful country. And the woman that's just passed was a powerful woman. And you're going to get loads of people that would love our country, our justice system, our way of life, our values, our freedoms that still exist in this country, although you think they don't, they do. There's other places around the world that would love to fit up for us, love to fit up. Devalue the crown, devalue the monarchy, devalue its people. That's the bottom line. Don't condemn you if you hate them. You know, if you're hating on them, that's your own little prerogative, innit? It's your own little mindset. And I'm sure you'll be stuck there hating on individuals for the rest of your life. Taz, what's your opinion of criminals from the 60s, like the craze, crime being glamorised? It wasn't glamorised, was it? It caught the attention of people. I don't think they were glamorised. I don't... Well, was the craze glamorised? No. They were just dressed different from today's criminals. They'd done different things. They boxed. You know, they glamorised boxing, didn't they? It's all the same thing, really. It's just a, a modern-day version of it all. Just a modern-day version of it all, isn't it? Bigger, more money in the world. But all big families stem from crime. The people that rule the world right now Stemmed from crime, inventing laws, bringing in jurisdictions, segregating areas and giving them names, and they were all crimes, right? Whether you like it or not. Inventing currency, creating war, they're all crimes, right? And all them big families that you hear about, the billionaire families that own all the big corporations around the world, they're the same. You know, look at London, look at Parliament, look at the whole system. It began with criminals running the streets of London. Poor people with major stashes be trying to have oh, no, what money will be getting to. Of course they will. I think everyone's been looking about what's going to be the single currency around the world, haven't they? Everyone. Everyone seems to overlook how powerful the sterling is. Everyone thinks it's going to be the American dollar. Everyone thinks it's going to be the euro, euro note. Everyone thinks, bam, 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 bam. What's wrong with the sterling? It's one of the powerfulest countries right around the globe. Why can't that be the single currency? Why can't the UK and the British monarchy become the powerful base it used to be in a world so that we're so out of control right now? Why are we sitting here bone idle, not starting to lay foundations in a world that's out of control? You know, you've got to adapt, haven't you? You've got to move with the times. And the times we're in now, judging the world and everything that's fucking going on, it looks like an element of the British Empire needs to be coming back into play, doesn't it? Because the world is right now. And if you want your kids to have a future, remember all them soldiers that went to war to protect our values and our freedoms and everyone forgets about them now. You see all these soldiers maimed and shot dead. 
There's a reason why they fight. Are you brave enough to go to war with your own people on your own streets because they don't share the values you do? What if you're the minority on them streets and you've got to fight for the values you believe in, but the majority have got different ones? Would you succumb to their power? Would you submit to their advances? Would you stand proud and take a bullet in the chest? It's mad, isn't it? There's too much division, la. Everyone is divided to the hilt, and you can see that right now. All right, so just let's say this. What if all your power went down in this country? How would you react? And I mean all power. How would you react? Who would be the game in that desert there? So imagine all electricity just went boom. Think about the consequences of the electricity going off. No data, no tellies, no phones being charged to keep your kids in the corner so you can do once. No hot water, no food staying fresh in your fridge, no fresh milk, nothing. Who becomes the game? Who becomes the prey in that situation? Them people with generators, them people with petrol, them people with batteries. And like this, trust me, that's what becomes valuable in them times. No one likes the dark 24-7, trust me, people. But it can happen. That's what they can do. Imagine what goes on in daylight. No electricity, everyone's cooking food from fire, it's just getting messy. Mm. Everyone's turning into survival mode. Who are you going to stand with? Who are you going to protect first? T Side 420 says he's going and graft a lot of jewelry shops. Yeah, because you can eat jewelry, can't you? Once the lecky's gone, everything's gone. It's like your housemate. If you've got no lecky, you've got no money. You've got no petrol stations because the pumps can't turn on. Everything just goes to bits, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, so now, yeah, you're all eight in monarchy. Have you ever thought what anarchy looks like? And I mean proper anarchy. You've seen a few mild protests where they smash buildings up around London and stuff like this and spray paint. But imagine it went off. Imagine it went off. No money coming from your banks. You can't go to the cash machine. They're not even opening up because everyone's saying so they just shut shop. They're not asked. No money. Everyone needs to eat still. So the shops get tethered. Like you see, and now these shoplifters being brazen as one in with weapons walking out with trolleys. Think about that tenfold. Shops, no food on the aisles. No water. No nappies for your kids. No roll. <laughs> Let me just started screeching, scooping, fighting with each other for bog roll. Imagine what it's going to be like with no electric, no money to buy the bog roll. The kids not getting fed properly, not getting looked after. Drugs still rife. 
firearms everywhere, division all over the gaff. It all comes into play once the electricity gets switched off. <laughs> what would you do? Okay. Have you learned your camping skills? Do you know how to light a fire without a lighter? Do you know how to build a tent without a tent? <laughs> you need to have these survival skills in your fat pack, people. You need to be able to survive on the bare essentials when this kicks in. And the majority of you, whether you like it or not, are caught up in that luxurious lifestyle. 15 pillars on your bed, big house coat, top of the range tellies, all this big, <laughs> fresh coffee every morning. <laughs> all you coffee drinkers will have headaches that will paralyze you because you aren't getting your coffee. <laughs> Anyway, we're just having a joke, getting warm. It's only my second night on YouTube. Got to get used to it. TikTok's different. It's a bit more faster. A lot more people going in and out. Wi-Fi gone. They'll have a system soon that the only people that can tie fat, um, the only people that can tap into Wi-Fi. Well, like it now, you you can't tap into Wi-Fi unless they let you. You still got to put a code in your phone. You still got to put this password in. You know, you're only getting Wi-Fi because they're letting you. As tech as technology progresses, they'll have the ability to just go right. We only want them individuals to have data and it'll probably be the justice system you know the police the fire brigade the ambulance service usually the only ones that can communicate through data switch it off for everyone else and that's what they'll have the ability to do don't get it twisted you know you've seen the big madness going on with all these cameras popping up for dead cheap where you can just put them in there and tap them to your phone don't think they're not looking in your houses off them don't think they're not, you know, getting up close and personal to how, how you behave within your household. You're putting these ring alarms on. You're putting the same types in the corner. You're so based on Wi-Fi. Don't think for one minute there isn't a parent company that can tap into every Wi-Fi company. Wi-Fi companies, you've got your Virgins, your Vodafone, this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that. And you're going to all them thinking you're buying your Wi-Fi off them, you're buying your data off them, and that's it. They can only get into it. Da, da, da. Now, above them, you've got a parent company that is just intelligence-based, and they can get into your Wi-Fi, they can go straight to your router, and any device that is attached to your router, they can get into. And I'm not talking. I'm not talking. Honest to God. Your Bluetooth devices in the house, they can tap into like that. And that's all through the Wi-Fi. So don't think if you're going to Vodafone or you're going to Plusnet or you're going to Easy, whatever they are. Don't think for one minute you're going to them and they're in control of your Wi-Fi. And once you've purchased that Wi-Fi off them, they can't be Wi-Fi. They're still telling you if you can have Wi-Fi or not. They can switch you off tomorrow. You can switch your data off tomorrow. Your Wi-Fi and your phone. Doesn't matter who you are. Can you talk about aliens? Would it shock you if we all was of some sort of hybrid human? What would, it, what would be the difference, people, right? So, look, you hear all these conspiracy theories, right, about, oh, reptilian blood and... So what? So what if they are? I haven't seen them running around eating us. <laughs> Have you? 
You've got all these conspiracy theories saying, wow, the reptilian blood and the demons and all going to... Are they? They've been watching us for years and years and years. They haven't came near us yet. Why are they coming near us all of a sudden? <laughs> okay, no. The mad aren't You know what, though? You've got to understand the powerful theories, aren't they? And that's why they get you pulled towards them. It's the way they put them across and how they use the words to get into the brain to make you become interested in them. But come on, people. Look, I've, I predicted four or five years ago, within the next 10 to 15 years, you're going to have dogs walking around with their owners on the back feet. I've predicted it. You're going to have dogs walking down the street next to their owners on the two back feet like this. Probably mm -mm. Just like humans collectively think, so do dogs. You know how intelligent they are? They've got their own supply of energy and their mind is just as powerful as our minds. And the way humans can connect with their mind, dogs can connect through their minds. And whether you like it or not, for decades, dogs have been getting tortured by humans. They've been getting kicked left, right and centre. They've been getting treated like complete and whatever. Don't be shocked if half of these dogs all of a sudden grow two feet and switch on you all. Don't be shocked if you see these dogs in huge numbers just going ram and eating you. <laughs> I'm fucking telling you. Have you seen the size of some of them dogs now? All the drug dealers have got them, haven't they? Need to feel secure somehow, so they've got dogs. <laughs> I'm not saying all drug dealers, you know, you've got some real people with decent dogs. A lot of people like, a lot of people align themselves to cats. A lot of people align themselves to dogs. I've always looked at dogs with lads on the, on the estates as a, as an insecurity. It's an observation of mine. When you've got that bouncing around by yours with his big dog, you take that dog off and he won't even come out of his house. Trust me. He won't even come out of his bedroom without his dog. Two ten records. Now, I don't say that, lad. I've got a German Shepherd. Probably the best dogs you can have to mind your home. That's another thing with dogs, isn't it? Remember years ago, you used to mind a dog because you wanted a guard dog. you got people buying these pugs down at a bar this big. Can't even bite through your shoe. <laughs> Spending Brewsters of them then thinking they're going to mind their house from burglars. It is what it is. You know, dogs get looked after more than humans these days. Majority of them, don't they? i got a Jack Russell. He will give anybody a ripped up training. <laughs> they're the best. Not to guard you, you're best having a Jack Russell and a rock wheeler. The Jack Russell just gets launched in the hall by the front door and your rock wheeler's by your bed. The Jack Russell's the alarm, in it. <laughs> Any little noise is just... <laughs> then the rotty ears, it jumps up, stands at the top of the stairs, just waiting to come through. <laughs> That's what you should have. A little doorbell and a guard dog. That's if you're scared in your own home, you know what I mean? Get a little doorbell, one of them tenacious ones. And then just get a big beast that sits at the top of the stairs like that. <laughs> Come in, lad. Fucking bet you don't. Yeah, and your mate's in Albania and laughs. That's how I treat my dog. His is on a chain. I know you've probably got yours in bed with you. Playing with it. <laughs> You get birds going to bed with two dogs and I'm just thinking, wow, what goes on underneath them covers when that dog's getting all weird? Sounds of those bullies making the... You know what I'm saying, don't you? 
Must go on. Must go on, mustn't it? Must it? There must be women out there experimenting crazy. You know, I've heard I've heard women saying and uh, talking about Animal Farm. I'm going, yeah, what's Animal Farm? Haven't you watched it? You're meant to be a man. Yeah, I'm a man, but what is it? Well, you know, this woman gets done by a horse. Ooh, what the hell? Don't start saying you haven't thought you're your pug wearing a horse when you've got home pissed, dived into bed like you do with it every night because your fella's locked off in jail. Have a little mess with a <laughs> stroker's belly, get a little semi on, and you're just going animal farm on it. Ooh, get away, girl. <laughs> Pure pedigree bum breath. <laughs> pedigree bum breath. I'm just joking, people, you know. Trying to enlighten the platform of YouTube. Okay, stop now, says Amal Safar. I've stopped. It's getting a bit rude. I don't know. I don't know why. It's YouTube. It has a different effect on you, doesn't it? <laughs> but as always in my live feed, you get the tongue and cheek, and then you get the intelligence, don't you? You've got to balance it out. Life is about balance. You know, the yin and the yang. The ting and the tang. You're not flowing tonight, bro. Neither are you, lad. You're normally okay, but every time you have a drink, you start turning and nasty. You get blocked, don't you? That video of you and all with the beard is funny, that. I look like four years old. Graveyard teeth. Do you have a go of making beats anymore, Darren? Brad beats? No, lad. I had all. I had to get rid of all my equipment. Unfortunately, I had a full. I had a full recording studio, lad. Brad beats. Making my own beats. I made my own track called Airwaves with a boss dance track. It was a boss dance track, but then I just. With, with me having to move consistently and not having the money to move me whole stuff and some of the accommodation I'm going to and it just would have been all so I've just had to get rid or sell to make my life a little bit better but it is what it is mate Anyway, people, as you know, I'm just easing my way back into YouTube. You're going to be getting me a few nights a week, probably end up every night a week. I am not going to let these little bell ends, you know, the little weirdos that me moderators are having problems with right now, jeopardise my live feeds. I'm not going to start screaming, coming across aggressive. Don't need to. I'm not that mindset anymore. I found peace. I found love. <laughs> you are pleased to every female, be it mother and sister, niece or daughter, this afternoon is a powerful statement you've ever made with a strong female influence. They won't listen to him. I know that, Martin Smith. I know that, mate. They're all mummies, boys, at the end of the day. They're all mummies, boys, at the end of the day, mate. And they will be told. What software was you using to make your beats? Um, I still got it, I think, but... Garage band. Garage band, mate, it was simple. 
I'll be up as well about doing a book. I have me, yeah. You can't be arsed, mate. You always talk fast, bro, keep flowing. Always bot hard. Keeping data, drum and bass and dubstep tunes, hard to collect industrial vinyl. Good on you, kid. Still selling the art, does. If you want it, lad, you can have it. CMC Music, hello all. Fighting Tories, do a rap. Adam May, we live out the sticks. Now I'm with this comfy lines and all. Right, so there's not really anything topical to speak about. I think we've spoke about the Kinnitons. That's only the relevant news on YouTube at the moment, isn't it? You want to me? Hope you will. If I could go into schools and educate the youth, I'd love to. I'd do it over a screen. I had intentions of putting a 15 minute DVD together. But as always, I believed in the wrong type of individual who was promising to help me in them areas and they shit on me. So everything seems to have fell back a little bit. Good on you, la. Four to two, darling. Yes, kid of land. Stephen Daniels. Anyway, everyone that's locked in tonight, I hope you've subscribed. Anyone that want, wants to become a member, please do. I'm not popping in and going missing for months. This is me back on the ball. Things will get interested. As I've said today, I'm working on content. I don't really want to speak about that crime anymore because it upsets me. Probably upsets a lot of people. It is what it is. I put I put a little hour out there today. Peace out till five. Shall see you tomorrow.